Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Or if you guys are new, welcome to my channel. Hey, hey, peep the shirt real quick. You know, I got that I got the ace merch going on right now. If you guys want to check it out, it's in the link in the description. If you guys want to swing on over there, see if you guys want to get anything. I got some phone cases, I got iPhone cases, I got clothes. It's like this one. I got a whole bunch of different variety of colors. So if you guys want to support me and get some awesome Ace merch, it's in the description. We are reacting to some TFIL overnight. If you guys know who TFIL are, great people. I haven't met them, but they're great. I always watch their videos, and they pr they made a overnight channel, and I've been kind of watching them. But I'm trying to get into that, so like, if I'm not doing a Sam and Kobe, I mean, I could do a overnight um, series right to their videos. I watched a decent amount of them, but this one's new. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna react to this. So if you guys are new, get your snacks ready. This is gonna be a decent long video. Got my water, and let's get on with this video. Hey, before I start this video, like I always say, I'm gonna leave the top of the description the original link of this video. If you guys want to swing on over there, drop a comment, hit the little like button, subscribe to the channel. You know what I'm saying? That's all I want to say. Let's get into this video. Yeah, they made hot. They ain't time my shit. Let me pop my shit. Let me pop my shit. I do what they wish. I can't swim. I'm the Warren Occult Museum Woo! is one of the most unique and terrifying places on Earth and the most haunted area in the world due to the immense amount of items all held within this one space. Where nearly no, was that the end about that? Oh God. All at once a room full of dark mysteries and even darker secrets a collection so sinister it is kept under lock and key not only to keep people out but to keep what is held within it from escaping 9 p.m has always been the cutoff time for being inside the museum this is when all of the cursed items come to life oh great their full power a museum in which the tables are turned visitors do not only look and study each item on display but the items watch study and listen to you. Entering the museum truly alone is impossible. One wrong Woo! move, one disrespectful action could mean an attack on your well-being, or even worse, your soul. We will have the chance to continue seeking answers from the same items Ed and Lorraine once did. And yes, no. that includes Annabelle. You're gonna no be the first way. Ones investigating this museum. The Warren Museum. No way! We have all just returned from a 2.5 week of filming together through the USA. Out of nowhere, I was con contacted about the opportunity to visit the film, the Warren Museum. I had to convince everyone to leave immediately, but I didn't want to tell them why. <laughs> oh God, to make a surprise. Hey, Corey. Yes. Hey. Hey. Hey, Corey, my man. Oh, yeah. What's going so on? Nothing right? bad happened. Something actually amazing happened. Well, I mean, we just opened 98 Divic boxes, so I'm sure anything <laughs> that happens, you're going to be happy with. Did something happen with the Divic box? Maybe, but something good happened. Well, okay, something okay, good well, happened. Are you still packed? Yes. So that means you're already ready to go to the airport tomorrow. What time do we have to leave? Uh, the flight leaves at 11 a.m. So we gotta get up at like 6 a.m. And, and I already booked oh, the, the, the tickets, no. so. We just came that's, home. That's, oh. We just came back <laughs> from 20 different places. Yes. <laughs> and now we're going to one more. One more. Are you ready? Look, dude, we just handled 20 straight nights together in the motorhome. Every haunted location in the Midwest. You might have cried at one point. I might have cried at one point. You thought I was gonna die. I thought you were gonna die. I thought I was gonna kill you. We all thought we were gonna kill each other. What is There's he wearing? What are those shoes? Really cool. <laughs> we have a lot of different boxes. Or slides. You know, I don't know happened, but now we need to go to one more slide. I, okay, can you tell me what the spot is? No. Oh. Uh, oh, I doing forgot there? this dude yep. does do parkour stuff. Why are stuff. you here alone? Third question. Why do I have a camera? That's. That's probably the most <laughs> one. What are you doing tomorrow? Do parkour. Mainly. Cool. Can you be on a flight tomorrow, please? It's gonna be the most dangerous handshake in the two world. Days, two days. Two days. <laughs> Come on, you got it. You got it. Right, let's, let's go. go. You're so cool, show up when you're athletic. Uh, Part-time ghost hunter. Part-time professional athlete. Woo! Wow. I wish I could do that. I'll break my neck on that. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> What you doing? We just got back. Are you on my front doorstep with a camera? Why do you have someone to mail at your front door? We just got back. <laughs> <laughs> smile on your face. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Can you be at LAX at 11 a.m.? Please. 
<laughs> it's something cool, I promise. I'm not going anywhere far. New York City. Uh, <laughs> New York City. I'll pack the oh, camera gear. Geez. Just bring your clothes. Should I be afraid? Probably. Bye. This man is going to every door now. Joe, oh, man, we're not in California. Hi. Uh, Where are you? I'm actually in a bus right now to go back to LA. In the, headed to like Newburgh, New Jersey. Wait, where are you right now then? I'm in New York City. Can you stay in New York for two more days? Why? We're all, we're all going to be there tomorrow. In New York tomorrow? Yes, everyone. Corey, Corbin, Evan, all said yes. <laughs> oh, we'll no, we just don't know what's going to happen. Pay okay. for your flight. Don't worry about your flight home. I'll cover it. <laughs> Hey man, he's getting the whole team on him. No, absolutely. He's getting the whole team. You don't know how to behave. <laughs> About 15 hours later. I dragged us all here. I know we just literally got home uh, from we here? three weeks on a trip. Yeah. And all I said was, get to the airport, we're flying to JFK. Well, then flying. from there, we got in the rental car, and then I drove us around two hours, two and a half hours to here. Yes. Wow. Without telling us anything. No, because exactly. tonight is something. <laughs> they, they, they're not ready for it. Did any of you happen to see what town we're in right now? I never looked. No. So, we're in Connecticut. Okay. okay. I at, thought we were still in New yeah. York. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I thought we were still in New York. I know, I know. Okay, we're in Connecticut. <laughs> Jonah knew we were in Connecticut because Jonah's from Connecticut as well. Which is oh, look at his little camera rig. That we live not too far away like from each other. 20 minutes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. this is Shelton. This is where I grew up. Oh. This is where Blake Shelton grew up. Mm -hmm. No, this is where Elton grew up. This is where you grew up. I haven't been back to this town for almost 13 years to the day. Oh, oh. jeez. We're gonna investigate your old house. Strangely, growing up, I lived in a house that was within a cemetery, and I found out later that the house I grew up in was the old funeral home and possibly crematorium. And we're actually what? about a quarter mile away from No way. Wait, so you don't know the story, like the trampoline story? No. A lot of weird things happened to me, shit that you guys don't even know about. Stuff oh, I've never told. That's the only story I've ever told you. Oh, I didn't know that there was more. Why do you think I have absolutely no fear of like demonic anything? Wait, why would you never tell us this? Was there a demon exactly in your right. house? Mm. <laughs> was there a demon in your house? Uh -huh. <laughs> and I will show you the house I live in. Yeah, the fact yeah. that I just like was like, get on an airplane, this has to happen tonight. Yeah. No excuse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not like the house has been sitting there for years and years and years. And like I could have done this any other time with all the other times that we've been in the area. But tonight is like particularly the night that we have to be here super urgent last minute paid really expensive flights yeah. to be here tonight <coughs> close you know what i mean so like let's let's go ago. let's go see my house wait did you summon a demon in your house on this day so we're about to see elton's original house like left 13 years ago i think when he grew up i think you know what i mean what to open before we didn't realize that think about that that's kind of cool and the last trip was 13 nights of investigations bro they are busy your house growing up what's eight plus eight Haunted. That was 16. Yeah. Yes, sorry. 8 plus 8. Haunted. Don't count too hard. I don't know. I never know anything. <laughs> what are you talking about? Did you guys even get in with those rigs on? No. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Film the license plate. Oh, yeah. Wait, Film the license, license plate. plate. That is. Kind of weird. That is weird. Where, it's, where you're from. Where you're from. Yeah. I also live in Florida. Yeah. Ooh, mm. are lying down. Did you, summon, <laughs> did you summon a demon in your house 13 years ago today? Is that why we're here? Do you think if I summoned a, a demon in my house 13 years ago today, you don't think I'd be doing it in every video we've been in? I would have learned how to do this years ago. I'd be an expert. I just have them on call. So, I'm like speed dial. Hey, Elton. <laughs> hey, Elton. <laughs> oh, that is the cemetery. Every day in my bedroom window I had a perfect view of people getting buried. Oh my bro, what? this is where you lived? Yeah, wait. We all you'll know the house when you see it. So this is why you're into ghost stuff. I don't know. You definitely grew up in a haunted house. Is that it? Wait, is that it? That's it. Whoa, that looks like a conjuring house. <laughs> Bro, this, that looks like a house we would invest wait, in. Wait, no, yeah. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I feel like it's not his old house. He's got a trick of thinking that it's his house, but they're going to pull up to the um the museum, and he's going to tell them. That can't be where he stayed at. Well, <laughs> we couldn't find records for it, but the crematorium was in the basement. What? And that red hatch door. I mean, I might, I mean, I might, might be right, but I don't know. I guess would have been. No, that actually is his house. Like Never mind. I'm sure we'll drive around. And 
ridiculous. I thought he was going to tell them that this was his house, but they're going to pull up to the um, the museum and be like, yep, we're staying overnight at the museum. <laughs> we're just going to pull right up? Well, they don't know we're coming. Wait, what? And I don't think anyone's here. So we flew five hours for the owners to not know that we're here so that you could just knock on a door? Let's find out. I figured while we're in the area, I might as well come here, right? So this isn't the surprise? No. Wait. So the, Wait. What's, the, what's the surprise? What's the surprise? <laughs> what's the surprise? Uh, can only see his legs. I don't know if we can see him. Okay, Evan, do you know what's going on? I have no idea. I literally thought <laughs> we were gonna film at his house. Oh, he's knocking. He knocked. Oh my God, he's going to the basement. That's actually his house. Imagine getting married to him, and like he That's gets crazy. down on a knee, and he's like, "What do you think I'm gonna do?" You tell me. <laughs> you tell, yeah, you tell me what I'm doing. Oh, get in the car. <laughs> yeah, get in the car. Get in the car. Hello. Oh, no. We're going on a six-hour flight. Oh, come on. <laughs> so what's the plan? Well, I'm gonna leave a note, and then maybe we'll call us. You know, I mean, you're here now. Let's just enjoy it. Let's just relax. Enjoy the creepy house that I grew up in. And let's okay. have some fun tonight. What do you mean, enjoy the creepy okay. house? We don't even know if they're gonna let us in. Okay. We don't know, but you know, if you want, we can just go into the cemetery tonight, just stand outside their window holding candles and just wait till they let us in. <laughs> Dude, it was literally like a six hour flight. <laughs> we drove a couple hours. Dude. We're in Connecticut. I thought we were in New York. <laughs> and he won't tell us exactly what we're doing. That's Elton for you. Straight up Elton. This is still haunted, which I'm assuming it is. Imagine when the owners come home and they see this note on their door. Bro, I'm not gonna lie, their camera is on point. Like you saw how you see how crisp their camera is? Or I used to live in the camera. <laughs> the rumor has it there's a demon in the basement where I used to play drums. Please let me come into your house tonight at 3 a.m. I will give you four hundred dollars. <laughs> Not just him, five guys. Yeah, at least like put your LinkedIn or something on there. Yeah, exactly. Probably tape it to the outside of their mailbox. You're not allowed to put things in people's mailboxes. So which one of y'all know what we're doing? I have no fucking clue what we're doing. I, I literally have no idea. Do we believe Evan? Comment down below if we believe Evan. Just cause of the handwriting. Hope it doesn't rain. So you're not gonna tell us. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell us. I'll tell you as we drive there. I've wanted to come here for forever. And I've been trying to come here for four years. The most famous paranormal investigators to have ever lived, basically. The Warrens. Yeah. So are we yeah. about to go see the Annabelle doll? Uh, <laughs> is that what this video is? We're gonna go see the Annabelle doll? Uh, Annabelle. What else? The entire museum. <gasps> Dude! <laughs> Dude, wait, 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 wait. I thought that wasn't even, no I thought it wasn't even possible. Way. My last message with the guys that own it and run it was in 2019. What? And then out of nowhere, I got a message saying, hey, do you still want to film here? No way! Holy yeah. oh, No way! Okay, so they have made, it was worth the flight. They have made movies on so many items that are in this museum. It's a, it's a lot of fun. What are we doing? What are we doing? I'll let them tell you. Uh, you're not supposed to be in there after 9 p.m. We will be there after 9 p.m. Mark, oh. supposed to be there after 9 p.m. This is gonna be crazy. Like, what if you're not supposed to be there during those hours because that's when the items in there can attach to people? You know what I mean? Ooh. Like, more likely. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's, what, that's what's going on. Sure. They hear everything you're saying, and we're doing it anyway. And people have died because of some of these items. Mm -hmm. Crazy. He's not wrong. Holy shit, Holy bro. shit, dude. This is intense. I actually can't believe this is happening. Ed and Lorraine Warren are among the most well-known, if not the most well-known, paranormal investigators in the world. Yep. Having managed thousands of cases and considered to be prominent figures in demonology, they are pioneers of the paranormal community that is who paved crazy. the way for all future investigators and conversations to be had about what the spirit world is truly capable of. Oh God! Oh my God, that's gonna crap out of me. Years, they sought to help those plagued by demons Whew. and spirits alike. It is believed that they have investigated over 10,000 different cases of paranormal activity. 10,000? Although 000. they have both passed away, Ed in 2006 and Lorraine in 2019, their stories, legacy, That's and crazy. I was 19 years old when still they live on, on uh, and Lorraine Some of their away. most famous cases of the direct inspiration of the Conjuring Universe film franchise, which now has become the highest grossing horror franchise in history. With That's more than crazy. Billion. And they're all based on true events, bro. Like, what? 
dollars at the box office alone. Annabelle, The Conjuring, Amityville Horror, Enfield Poltergeist, Devil Made Me Do It, all of which have been based off of their true cases and documentation, Bro. with most of these artifacts being preserved within the Warren Museum. The location we are not only visiting, but conducting an eight-hour paranormal investigation of Bro. tonight. And yes, that means all throughout 3 a.m. Before we enter any location, we always seek to learn as much as we can about it, so we may have the best understanding of what we are facing. <laughs> the history and importance of the Warren Museum, not only to our investigation, but the impact it had across the world, cannot be understated. Truly, if not for Ed and Lorraine, I do not believe this YouTube channel would exist, as they helped allow the love of paranormal to become normal. Ed and Lorraine's oh, yeah. story begins Pernal, when they man. first met in their youth. Lorraine was 15 I got a whole when she spirit met Ed at the Colonial here. Theater in Bridgeport, horror, Connecticut. Not horror, some Ed was an usher at that time, Using with this. Lorraine being a regular visitor at the theater. It's gonna be crazy. They would often see each other. It was through these visits that they eventually began dating. Yet their relationship was cut I short, forgot the and Ed was what? enlisted into the Navy to fight in World War II. He was deployed only four months, as his ship was sunk, and he was sent home on a 30-day survivor's lease. In what? 1945, during his 30-day leave, Ed and Lorraine decided to get married. The beginning of an eternal legacy. On July what? 6, 1950, their daughter Judy was born, and in 1951, marked the conclusion of Ed's service in the Navy, allowing him to return home full time. I didn't even know. I didn't even know she had a daughter, bro. What? I wonder what she's doing right now. Returning to Connecticut, Ed intended to be a professional painter. However, his other secret obsession was with ghosts and the afterlife. It's no secret that he grew up in a haunted house himself. Eventually, he found a way to meld his two worlds together, creating paintings of any home that was rumored to be haunted. Upon completion, he would then knock on the door of the home and offer the painting to the owners, and in exchange, would be allowed into the home with the rain to conduct an investigation into the supernatural to see if the home truly was haunted. That's and by crazy. 1952, the paranormal became their main focus. After seeing how their lives aligned with the supernatural, they began to work together as a couple, investigating reported hauntings and various cases of demonic possession, both of which were devouting their lives and minds to becoming the most well-versed skilled and knowledgeable experts in the field. Yet these investigations and success that came from them were not simply achieved due to creating a painting and asking to walk around a haunted Bro, home. Bro, that is a crazy Both house. Both devout Catholics. Ed specialized in demonology and Lorraine possessed supernatural abilities herself as a psychic, medium, and clairvoyant. Their combination of research, paranormal investigations, science, and religion allowed them to hold a well-rounded and unique understanding of the world that lives beyond death. Becoming so renowned for his abilities to exorcise demons and evil spirits, religious authorities would call on him and Lorraine to assist in their worst cases. The phrase what? often tied to the Warren philosophy and based on their research in demonology is, This fairy tale is true. The devil exists. God exists. And for us, as people, our very destiny hinges upon which one we elect to follow. Ooh, Lorraine, psychic that is began true, to bro. That is true. People got their mixed emotions, bro. At the age of nine. I know last day. Beginning one day during her time at a private Catholic school, she would begin seeing light around people and notice that one nun in particular was glowing more brightly than the mother superior. What? It was from this time that she realized that the lights that she was seeing were people's auras. Lorraine continued to develop her skills to become proficient as a trance medium as well as a clairvoyant. What? With these gifts, she was able to assist Ed in a way like no one else in the world could, creating a team willing to take on the most severe and terrifying cases brought to them. Those that in need crazy. From all over the world would reach out in hopes to have their expertise to help combat the darkness that was consuming them. As their cases and evidence compounded, their need to be thoroughly organized grew. This led to the development and creation of the New England Society for Psychic Research. Founded in 1952, became the first ghost hunting group in New England and spawned a path for future groups. The goal was to combine religion with science to study the paranormal. The Warren's investigations work began to shift more towards the expelling 
of spirits, demons, and conducting exorcisms. At a time when stories of the paranormal were whispered at the loudest, Ed and Lorraine opened up the conversation about the devil, God, and the afterlife. They brought that conversations about darkness to the public light. With over 10,000 cases they worked on with military, law enforcement, the church, reporters, and researchers. There was no shortage of information they were willing to present. Now, the true artifacts of their decades of research are held within their home, the Nesper headquarters, and the infamous Warren Museum. Dude, Each what? item with its own history, from some of the most remarkable and terrifying cases. We will have the chance to continue seeking answers and evidence from the same items Ed and Lorraine once did. And yes, that includes Annabelle. Oh no, bro! <laughs> That's it. Museum closed. Please That's take it. notice. Violator crisis. Museum closed. No trespassing. Bro, this is it. This <laughs> is nuts. Um, many people must show up here that they have to kick out. I remember watching one of the videos where Ed said that no one had ever broken in, but many of people had broken out. I can't believe we're here, bro. This is crazy. This is legendary. Everyone's here. <laughs> so I think they're gonna come out in a minute to meet us. So we have our normal cameras. Yeah. Yes. We have our infrared GoPro cameras. We have our night vision cameras. Bro. But additionally, we have something else that we're filming with tonight because we're going to be the very first ones to do a paranormal investigation here. Besides them, who own the place, at 3 a.m. What? what? At the devil's hour. Yes. We're going to be in the most unholy place. And we're the first people to decide to them. <laughs> yes. I asked for special permission. I was like, is there any possible way? How did you here? get that? What is that thing? Oh, that's sick. Wait a second. Whoa. Is this oh, a, that is this sick. This is an early 1980s VHS camera. <laughs> that's what? a fossil. What? And we have actual <gasps> Whoa! Wait, 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 audio wait, wait, wait. Bro, no. so the no. Can so, I see this? This is the way. What the heck? This is the way the Warrens would have done it. They didn't have no tools. way. They just had their mind themselves. I am so down. <laughs> hey. 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 Oh, hey. Oh, man. How you doing? This is Tony Sparrow, son-in-law of the Warrens, married to their daughter Judy. This couple met in 1979 when Judy accidentally waved to him thinking he was someone else, became love at first sight, what? and the rest is history. Tony is now director of Nesper, as well as the owner and manager of the Warren Occult Museum. No. Since the 1980s, Tony had worked closely with the Warrens and continues their work to this day. What? Originally a police officer, he is now known for his work in the paranormal field while also consulting for numerous films such as The Conjuring series. He took up the gauntlet after the passing of the Warrens and helps pave the way for the paranormal community through his lectures and presentations at colleges and on YouTube. As well. hey, hey, hey. Nice to meet you, Corbin. Corbin. You went to college? Elton. Thank you, Brad. Corey. Corey. Corey and Jonah. who are these guys? Evan. Evan. Jonah. Pleasure. Jonah, hey, please to meet you guys. This is Eric, one of my yeah. team members. Yeah, yeah. Chris Gorn, nice guys. to see you. Hey. Hey, Corey came ready tonight. This you can is, see how excited we are. I'll be able to track down one of these. Yeah. Whoa, you got yeah. oh, that's cool. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Ed Warren used to have one. almost hit an RCA like this. Really? This is what he got. An image of the white lady on what? the Union graveyard with this. What? Yeah, right. He used this. And, you know, there was no night vision or anything back then. No. Yeah. Just this, these are very low quality compared to today. Of course. Yeah. But he was able to capture some good stuff just using this old school. You like the old school. Yeah. You like the old school. So do I. This is Ed's uh, go to. Ed had open reel tape decks. He'd cart that thing around with a big <laughs> microphone. <laughs> Set it all up in the person's house and was interviewing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or he'd go to a place and he would ask questions like at a grave site, try to get an EVP on his tape, and he would sometimes get it. Wow. What? Those things worked. Yeah. And then he would he went to the cassette. When he interviewed somebody, he always brought a cassette. If you watch the Conjuring One movie, mm -hmm. you'll say it's November first, nineteen seventy one. Yeah, all at of the parent house and you hear of it you sat. Yeah, I have some of those some of them in the museum. Oh, That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. They used it. Lorraine's psychic ability as the equipment. That's why it's tough to match them as a team because Ed was a seasoned investigator, but also a demonologist. In other words, he read everything he could on demonology. Everything. What? The reason why he did it, he lived in a haunted house. 
in Bridgeport, Connecticut. One time he was sleeping with his twin sister in separate beds, but they were in one room. And his grandfather had recently died. He says to me, we're sleeping. All of a sudden, we're awakened by the sound of a cane hitting the stairs coming up to the second floor. And footsteps and a cane. He was my grandfather who carried a cane. Uh, and he said the cane and the footsteps got up to the bedroom and they were circling their beds. Oh my God. And he said, I said, what did you do? And he said, I had covers all over me. Yeah. Said, my sister and I were so frightened. We had the covers over us. We could hear the cane oh. tapping all around the bed. Yeah. The museum that you guys are going to have special privileges to go into. <laughs> Bro, you know, I'm excited for this. Are our friends, kind of. <laughs> we met you today, and you seem friendly. So, <laughs> people used to start saying, Ed, I got this haunted object. Ever since I bought this object at a tag sale, I had this, the next day I saw a shadow figure, or whatever it was. Or I used this Ouija board, and now I got a problem. Yep. Or there's a statue I bought, and it's, somebody must have cursed it. And can you take it off my hands, Mr. Warren? And you did. You know what, Lorraine? Right, let's clear out the art studio and we're going to make it an occult museum. I mean, people are always ask me, why do you keep those objects? He said, Tom, when I talk about something like the Annabelle doll and what happened, you give the whole story of it, and then people say, well, where's the doll now? And I go, oh, I threw it in a dumpster. <laughs> it's not here anymore. I burned it. Oh, no, we, we destroyed that. No evidence. He said, it's for people who want to learn more about the paranormal. This is evidence. If he wasn't on a case, he'd be studying more than you can imagine. I could bring in the museum whenever you guys are ready. And uh, on the way, I'll show you that little sign that says Barn Door Studios. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't take it down yet. Oh, is that that sign? That's nice. Right. Barn Door Studios. That's, that's sick. made that sign? Yeah. That's, yeah, dude, this was his studio. That's amazing, dude. Oh, are you guys ready? I'm ready. I used to teach about the paranormal. If you could say that word three times fast, I'll let you in. <laughs> Say it. Paranormalology. Paranormalology. We did it. Paranormalology. <laughs> hey, whoa. It's a lifetime for you guys, right? Because you haven't been here before. Wow. Uh, <laughs> please be respectful when you go in. Don't touch anything. And I'll explain some some of the major things that are in there. Okay. I'm not gonna give you everything that's in there. I want you guys to close your eyes and envision yourselves, all of you, each in a covering the white light all around your body. See, your aura is your supernatural glow around your body. Everything that God has created that's alive has an aura around it. They're all different, like a fingerprint. But that's where evil, that's where the demonic would try to enter through your aura, if you have a chink in it. If you have a weak spot in your aura, that's where the devil goes for. So how do you protect it? By envisioning yourself in a glowing white light all around your aura. Then ask God to protect you from anything evil, otherworldly, demonic, or inhuman. God will protect you with that white light. Ed used to use it, Lorraine used it, I use it, all our team guys use it. It's got us through a lot of stuff. So that's your extra armor of protection when we go into a place like this. You could do that when you go into a haunted location, cemetery, a haunted house, anywhere where evil might be prevalent, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, let's go. Oh, here we go. The Warren Occult Museum is one of the most unique and terrifying places on Earth and the most haunted area in the world due to the immense Bro. amount of items all held within this one space where nearly every item can see you and you can see it all at once. Haunted pictures and paintings, animal skins and masks used for black magic, real human skulls utilized in rituals, cursed statues, dolls, toys, musical instruments, voodoo artifacts, vampire coffins, tombstones, witchcraft items, and an endless list with a deadly history. A room of dark mysteries and even darker secrets, yet to be unlocked from the items they are contained within. A collection so sinister, it is kept under lock and key, not only to keep people out, but to keep keep what is held within it from escaping. Many of the items have been used for black magic or the occult in an attempt to hurt others, often having succeeded oh, in harming or killing. Woo. Many of the previous owners of these objects have ended up in mental institutions. Bro, you know, it's crazy. I've seen all of these Conjuring movies and they're still scary, bro.
strong effects and influence each item has. There is an immense amount of spiritual protection here to contain the evil within the objects, all of which comes from those that care. Bro, I'm like sweating. Like, I, I, feel, I feel like I'm sweating, but I'm not for the museum. Hosting a collection unlike anywhere else in the world, all items here are considered unholy, cursed, and evil. To touch an item is to condemn oneself, to invite demons and evil spirits to attack, and consume your physical and spiritual energies. Special protection is put in place to handle any item in the museum. There's a widget board people and everything. Are capable of doing so, all of which are with us tonight. 9 p.m. has always been the cutoff time for being inside the museum, and this lockdown continues until 6 a.m. This isn't about closing the museum for the night, but this is when all of the cursed items come to life and to their full power. Even from behind the wards and protections, they become extremely dangerous. This window Bro. of time is known as the psychic hours, and a smaller window within it is known as the devil's hour. 3 a.m. when the devil is mocking the holy trinity, empowering all items and spirits of an evil being. Even when Ed and Lorraine were still present, they would not be in the museum during those hours. Entering the room alone is at the risk of each person. The young Bro. man died in an accident hours after visiting the museum, where he was challenging Annabelle. A priest, as well as a detective, were nearly killed in the museum as well. A museum in which the tables are turned. Visitors do not only look and study each item on display, but the items watch, study, and listen to you. Entering the museum truly alone is impossible. One wrong move, one disrespectful action, could mean an attack on your well-being, or even worse, your soul. Wow. All right, my camera died, so I had to take a little pause. What are you saying, kinda? This is oh, awesome. Wow. Got the shot. Got that light. What you're gonna see immediately when you first walk in here, create what's called a topa, a human manifestation of the mind. If you have the knowledge, if you have the power, if you are high enough essence, can create things like that, a group would get together and they would take masks like this, put them on their, on their, over the face, and then hope to be able to remove the mask and have that image still there, creating what? a devil or a demon for themselves. Over here, though, we call this the shadow doll. Look at it. People say, why do you call it a shadow doll? Yeah. Well, look at it. Look at, look at how it looks. Yeah. It's That's, ugly. Yeah. There's nails coming out of it. There's a human tooth coming out of it. What? What? This bird hair bird feathers, I should say, animal bone. That was created specifically for one reason and one reason only, to cause the stress to other people if used in a proper manner. So if I was very knowledgeable in sorcery and wizardry, and I knew how to do it, I would take a photograph of this and print out the photo. On the back of the photo, I would write the curse that I want. Say towards, say towards Elton. Ha! Elton, I don't like because Elton tried to steal my girlfriend away. Something yeah. happened where I don't like Elton anymore, or, or in a business venture or something. Now I, don't, I want to get rid of Elton. I write a curse specifically for Elton because I'm knowledgeable in incantations and curses, we'll say. What? I send it in the mail, a picture with the curse on the back to Elton or to you. Just by you opening the envelope and seeing the photo, you accepted the curse that's written on the back unbeknownst to you. If what? the is powerful enough as a sorcerer or a wizard, it's called a shadow doll because it can come to you in your dreams if it's done right. It has been known to scare people in a nightmare so badly that it can stop your heart. That's why people wear a crucifix that's blessed or a medal that's blessed. That's the opposite. This would be the opposite of something that's holy and blessed. This would be the unblessed. Even though we have every that other is that blessed crazy. Priest, that comes in here and he blesses these objects. He does the whole museum, then he goes with holy oil and does his thing. These are from Africa, fertility dolls from Africa. Are they powerful? Yeah, they're powerful, and I'll tell you why. These were stolen from a witch doctor in Africa and sent to a man here in Bridgeport, Connecticut. If I can get those here and sell them on the black market, I can make myself some dough. The story is, this young 28-year-old police officer, two weeks after he got these, he became paralyzed from the neck down. What? Doctors couldn't even figure out what was wrong with him. He couldn't walk, couldn't talk, couldn't move. And for about a year and a half, he was like that, and he finally passed away. Now, was it from the fertility analysis? I'd say so. You can't prove it, right? It's hard to prove some of these things. 
But why would you take that kind of a chance with the unknown realm? There's powers out there that we don't know about. So here we have just a regular, like a household mirror, right? But we call it a conjuring mirror. Why? Oh because no. Because people have tried to conjure spirits through mirrors for many, many different years. People call it scrying, I call it crystal omancy. Mm -hmm. In other words, if there's a shiny object, it's easy for a spirit to reflect their image on the shiny object. We had a gentleman from New Jersey, actually. He's now at a mental institution because he dr drove him crazy. What he did was he replicated what we call a psychomantium. A psychomantium is a darkened room. When I say darkened, I mean black. You would sit down in a chair here. So all you could basically see or barely see is the mirror. This guy, he would sit here for hours looking at the mirror and say, Grandma, Grandma, I want to see my grandmother. I miss you or my father. Different relatives that he lost. He would sit there for two and three hours beckoning them to come to him through the mirror. What was he doing? He was what? trying to conjure spirits. Two weeks he did that straight, nothing happened. Jeez. Then, suddenly monstrosity, faces of monstrosities started to come through to this guy. It scared the living heck out of him. It frightened him so badly, like I said, he ended up in a mental hospital, this guy. You can do the same thing. What? I want you to, and the audience listening, I wouldn't ever want you to do that. If you do something I ain't gonna do that. enough, mm. and with enough intention, it's to the spirit realm, it's going to ha happen. Something's going to come through. It's probably not going to be your mom or your dad or your grandmother or your grandfather because the demonic can trick you. In other words, it could be someone who looks like your mom, your dad, your girl, whoever passed away, they come in the guise of who you want them to be because they, the demonic, want to be invited into your life. Mm -hmm. As soon as you invite them in, even if it's unbeknownst to you, it's almost impossible to get rid of a demonic entity then, because you, you invited them into your realm. Demonic goes after the weak will. Now, if you're strong in faith, and you're just stoic, you're like a John Wayne type of guy, and you believe in God, and God's going to protect me, a lot of times they don't mess with you. This is a, an organ from the Phelps house. They were clearing it out, and what? somebody called up Ed and said, Ed, would you like to have one, an artifact from that uh, Phelps mansion? He said, yeah, I'll take whatever you got. Ed said, from upstairs in the kitchen, he could hear the organ playing. They say, nobody's supposed to be in the museum. Would they break in? He'd run down the stairs, come here, and then the strains of the organ would stop. Three different times here. It's not what? a player organ. We have the remnants of Flight 401. These parts here are actual pieces of the record. Flight 401? Air aircraft. I'm telling, I'm telling you. I heard it's about that. Repo. I came home. It was raining pouring out. You know, under the tree was a guy in the flight outfit, flight navigator outfit, with the hat. He had rain gear on. They stand in the front of the tree, staring at Ed when he pulled in the driveway. And then Ed gave a double take and the guy was gone. Mm -hmm. Who's Don Repo? He was a flight navigator that went down with the crew and the passengers. Eastern Airlines, that's not no longer in business, they took pieces of the wreckage that they found mm -hmm. that were still good, yeah. like seats, the galley carts, voice flight recorders, and used them on other planes. The other planes that they were used on Guess who showed up? Don Repo. Yeah. Don Repo was seen by the pilots, oh. co-pilot, the flight attendants, and the passengers. They got so many <laughs> reports of seeing this guy sitting in full uniform in one of the passenger seats, and sometimes he'd go like this, Whoa. and then disappear. Why? They got so many what? reports that Eastern Airlines finally said, let's take those parts <laughs> off the plane. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they did. And when they took the parts off the plane, the whole thing stopped. Stop. There's things in this world you can't explain. That's and crazy! Thinks that you don't live after you die is wrong. I used to ask Lorraine a lot at lectures, why do you believe that? And she said, it's not a matter of belief, it's a matter of evidence. We get so much evidence that people live on after they pass away. Visions of people, people communicating, shadow figures, a full vision of someone that you lost. An apparition, by the way, is a spirit that you can recognize. A ghost is a spirit that you don't recognize. So in other words, if a ghost appeared right here and I didn't know the identity, I'd call it a ghost. But you'd say, that's my grandmother. That's an apparition that's of your an grandmother. Apparition. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's the only difference in terminology. Orally recognized. I went there with that's interesting. my wife and Lorraine. My wife immediately got sick when she got on the property. She's psychic, my wife, but she doesn't like to admit it. She liked to play with it. Lorraine was fearless. She would go to a place and 
you develop this psychic awareness. When you hone in and tune in like that on so many investigations, your ability just gets better and better. A lot of the people in England and Scotland, they do believe in ghosts. They don't talk about it much, but they believe in it because they've experienced it. So that's where Ed and Lorraine went a lot. And I went with them about four different times. It's great. Yeah, we that's there, crazy. Uh, last end of last year. Where'd you go? Uh, all over. Uh -huh. Honestly, we did Ireland, Northern Ireland, but we didn't touch Scotland and then England. We actually tried going to the Enfield house. Oh, you did? We tried like Main leaving. Street? Yeah, Main we Street? like left a note to be like, hey, if it's possible. Oh, that would have been cool to do. I know, but they didn't answer. Oh, I can tell you a little bit about that. I didn't visit it, but my my wife did, and of course Ed Lorraine did. John told me a story. John Cannyhurst told me told me a story. He's sitting on the couch in the Enfield house. All of a sudden, he said, "Tone, I hear this plopping noise." I said, "Yeah." He goes, "I look down, and in front of me is this big pile of crap." He goes, "And it was, it looked just like human crap." But it was big, horse size. But it was what? right there. I said, well, did it dematerialize again? He goes, no, we had to clean it up. What? It just, out of nowhere, a plop sound. And looked down, and there it was. What? Human excrement on the ground. Lorraine was standing in the kitchen. All of a sudden, wallpaper just tore away from the wall, floated around over the one light that was there to block her light. Lorraine wanted to stand under the light. She said, when I stood under the light, I felt better. In this house. The voices from Enfield, England were amazing. Oh. If you watch The Conjuring 2 at the end, you'll hear the actual oh voices. Yeah. But Ed had hours of those voices that would just converse with Ed. Now that's the, the key. The, the key is communication back and forth. John Bro, Cameron this is crazy. This is stuff I had never know, known about. John, the priest can't come today. About 10 minutes later, comes back and it's like, well, where's the holy water? And John says, there is no holy water, Ed. He goes, I know where it was. It is no longer there. It's gone. I can't find it. Ed says, well, you know what? We're going to make our own holy water. Give me some salt. Give me some water. Ed did like a simple, his own blessing over it, which is not really holy water. So then Ed said, well, we're going to do a blessing. Uh -huh. He says, hand me the holy water, John. And out of the blue, a voice says, but it's not blessed. Just like that. So what? they could see, and see whatever Ed was doing. It's not blessed. And it's like, what? But they start talking back and forth with him. They're mocking it. Nah, they're laughing. It's not what. That's the power of demonic entities. Wow. That's crazy. I gotta try again. Get it back in. That's, that's <laughs> dude. That's wow. That's is that wild. insane? Is that's that insane. Of, if I can get I believe it, I'm gonna invite you. The things, that, yeah, yeah, I'd like to come. All right. The <laughs> things in that house were just amazing. People would say, well, Ed and Lorraine weren't there. But let me just tell you this much. They weren't there for months or years. They were only there for maybe a week. But during that week, they helped out Margaret and Janet and Peggy more than uh, from the England Cyclical Institute did, according to Janet and Margaret. When Janet and Margaret saw Lorraine on the set of The Conjuring 2, they started crying. They were hugging Lorraine. And they said it right to the crew and me. They're the only ones that ever helped us, Lorraine and Ed. They're the only ones that ever really helped us or tried to help us. Oh, pearls, pearls of death. They were given to a lady. As soon as she put them on, she felt that she was being strangled to death. Like, like somebody took them and twisted them and were trying to kill her. So they had to what? snap them off. Why? Maybe there's a curse attached to them. I don't know. But they were given to Ed for that reason. Why are you so comfortable touching everything? Just because you're around it all the time? Yeah, yeah because I'm around it. Not only that, I, these items have been blessed. And I protect myself like we did outside. Went to confession first yeah. before I met you guys today. Ed said to me when he did it, he said he could pick them up, so I assume that I could pick them up. The things I won't touch are things like Annabelle, things like the satanic idol, the shadow doll. I won't touch those. And in fact, I'm just going to show you the Annabelle doll now, actually. Come over here, guys. Let's show you the Annabelle. Let's see Annabelle, Annabelle, bro. Oh, wow. no. This is a long story, but I'm going to tell it to you because if you want the real story, and what happened here. That's a handwritten sign by Ed. Positively do not open. He wrote that years and years ago. I think he wrote it probably in 77, 78. People ask me why the devil tarot card is here. Ed put it there, so we leave it there. It's a different case, but we put it there. This item here is probably the most dangerous item. That's why it's in a case. And I'm not going to touch it. I never touch it. Not with bare hands. People say, well, you know, didn't you bring it to Las Vegas? I did bring it to Las Vegas, but I know how to protect myself, and I'll tell you how I know. 
Ed showed me, he said, if you ever have to move the dial, the way to do it is this. But when you handle the dial, you don't handle it with your bare hands. Ed told me, wear a pair of like heavy welding gloves. Make sure your hands were drenched in holy water first before you even put the gloves on. You and gotta do all of that. yourself in a white light and ask God for protection from anything evil that might be attached to Annabelle. But it's rare that we move it. We try not to move it very often. There are times though when we have to move it, like when we have to repair the case, which we're gonna have, we're gonna have to do. We would have to repair this case and move the doll. What he does, Dan Rivera, my lead investigator, he made this case. What he does is he gets stain, he gets water, he brings it to the priest, and he has the priest bless it. Then when he built this case, he stains it with the holy water and oil in combination with the stain, infused in it. Behind the doll, behind the felt, he has a prayer written in there, the Our Father. Mm. On the sides, if you want to catch that with the camera, he cut out crosses on both sides, put a cross here, and he has two plaques, the St. Michael the Archangel prayer. We consider that a protection. Not total protection, because you never know. Yeah. That's why we don't touch it with our bare hands. That's why it's glass. So the that story is crazy. Is right you ready for this? Oh, absolutely. Lorraine and Ed got a call from two nurses. They said, we have this item and we think it's causing a lot of problems with us. Can you come over? So they went over the house in Lorraine and visited these two girls. One of her names was Donna. She's the one who received the doll from her mother as a birthday gift. Now Donna was about 28 years old at the time, but she liked dolls. A lot of girls like dolls. I don't blame them. You know, it's nice. It's like, like model cars. Nothing's wrong with the doll that they can see. Everything's fine. They even put a little gold bracelet on the doll's wrist there, you can see later. She would carry the doll all over the house. One day, while they're at the breakfast nook, I know it's gonna sound illogical and crazy, they're sitting at the breakfast nook and the doll is next to them. Her and her, her roommate is a nurse also. All of a sudden, those two flimsy rag hands levitated onto the table like this, together, like this, and landed there. Now the girls look at each other. How about you? I'd be a little panicky, right? They didn't. They were more intrigued, like the, the other nurse says to Donna, she goes, hey, the doll must be trying to tell us something. And Donna says, yeah, look, look, look maybe, I mean, and the other one goes back and says, well, I know a psychic. Why don't we call her in? We'll have a, we'll have like a, a seance or something and see if she, we can find out what she wants. That's what they did. That was their first mistake was giving a recognition like that. Yeah. So they did. They had a friend come in that night around the table and do a seance. Here's what the psychic says. I'm picking up the spirit of a young girl who was killed in a car accident outside your apartment complex. She's about seven years old, and her name is Annabelle. She's in your doll. That's no. What she says to the girls. The girls bought it, hook, line, and sinker. Now the psychic didn't know what the hell she was talking about because God does not allow a human spirit to enter inanimate objects. Like in other words, when you go home tonight, your grandmother's not in your living room chair. A demonic entity could be attached. Now they're intrigued, and they're saying, wow, there's a human spirit in our doll. And they suddenly really treat it with more reverence, you know, or like, like it's human. Donna had the doll on the edge of a couch, and he opened it. And Lou, who's Donna's fiance, was sitting on, laying on the other end of the couch, sleeping. He wakes up with a start. He's sweaty, he's like, heart pumping. He's holding his chest. He's like, man, I just had the worst nightmare. And Don's like, what happened? What happened, Lou? He points at the doll. He says, I just had a dream that that doll there was crawling up my leg and it got to my neck and started to strangle me. That was his dream, nightmare. What's he do? What? He grabs the doll off the couch because he's, he's angry and he's nervous. He grabs the doll, he picks it up, he throws it all across the room on the carpet. He says, that's just a raggedy ant doll, can't hurt anybody. When he said that, Seven psychic wounds appeared on his chest and on his stomach. Four this way and three this way. It came through his t-shirt. Like somebody took a scalpel and they could see the blood coming through the t-shirt. Now they're freaked out. Now Donna and their girlfriend and Lou are like, wait a minute, that can't be a seven-year-old girl inside that doll. Something's wrong here. They called a high Episcopal canon in Hartford. He didn't know what to do. He said, you know, I'm not versed in this kind of stuff. He said, why don't you call the Warrens? They know all about this stuff. And Lorraine get there, they had a priest come with him and did an exorcism of the house. 
And the girl said, well, what are you going to do with the doll? And we don't want that doll. Can you take it? I said, I'll bring it back to my museum. So I took it back to the museum in his car. He had like an old Chevy. As on the way home, the car's jerking, stopping, stalling. He never did that before. Oh! That's like on the, the one country, I forgot what room was. They, they were driving at the end of doll in the car, and the car was like geeking around. Get trouble controlling it, bouncing off the curbs. Finally, he stops the car. He had holy water. He always kept it in his pocket in a, in a little plastic bottle. He sprinkled holy water on him. He said, Sign of the cross and said, They're our father. And he said they were able to make it home. When he did, he put it in a chair, like this chair right here. Put it in a corner over here. You could just reach over and grab it. But he put a little yellow tape. It said, Danger, do not touch. So that was fine for a while, right? A priest, Father Bill, he comes over in the daytime, has lunch with Ed Moraine upstairs. After they're eating lunch and having tea, he says to Ed, Hey, Ed, can I see that doll that I heard so much about that put slashes on people? That's how he said it. Yeah, it's just come on down, Father. I'll show it to you. He gets to the doll. He starts to talk about the doll that's in the corner. And he starts to talk. He gets to the part with the slash marks for Lou. And the priest, like, doesn't want to know. The priest goes, what? He reaches over the tape, grabs the doll. That's the guy. He grabs the doll. You know what he does? He grabs it, almost like Lou. Throws it across the museum and says, God is more powerful than any devil or demon. Ed says, Father, why did you do that? I told you not to touch anything. He says, I don't care. God is more powerful. Ed says, you know what, Father, you're right. God is more powerful than any devil or demon. But no human being is. No priest. You shouldn't have touched it. The priest didn't want to hear it. They go back upstairs. Ed's not too happy with the priest, by the way. They say their goodbyes. The priest gets in his brand new car and leaves. The priest never made it to his diocese that night because the car no. was in control. Almost head out into a tractor trailer. No. The car and injured the priest. It didn't kill him, but it injured him. Two days later, the priest calls up, crying, crying on the phone to Ed. He tells him about the accident. He says, you know what, Ed? He says, the last thing I can recall was looking in the rearview mirror and saw an image of that doll, and I lost control of the car. Ed's like, what? Oh, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, but yeah, I told you not to touch the doll. Ed used to give these little tours of the museum. He used to charge like five or ten dollars, twelve dollars. You have a group of college kids who call up. You say, oh, you get ten kids. Oh. I'll get I know about this story that's about to happen. This this teenager or kid, I don't, yeah, I guess it was a teenager. He pissed off the doll and said the doll ain't real. And he goes on his motorcycle and he dies trying to go back to his house. He did an hour and a half tour. And one of the kids came on a motorcycle with his girl. I know this story. This story was crazy. Oh, this time the doll's in a case. Even Lorraine Even Warren said something about this um, accident. Which was that case there. That is really? the original case. No way! That's where that's the original case right there, and that's where we're going to put it when we transfer the doll for repairs temporarily. We put it back right there. That was the case that the young man ran up to. Ed's talking about the doll. He gets again to the slash. I guess the slash marks like a trigger. Mm -hmm. He talks about the slash marks appearing psychic wounds. The young man breaks the crowd, breaks in the crowd, runs up to the glass, starts banging on the glass with his fingers, and this is a bunch of bull. If that doc can put slashes on somebody, do it to me. What'd he do? He challenged. He challenged the doll. Ed's like, hey, you. You and your girlfriend, you got to get out of here. I can't have that. I just got through telling you people, don't disrespect the doll. Don't challenge. Get out. The kid's mocking it on the way out, laughing with his girlfriend. He never made it home. Mm -hmm. Three hours later, he found out that he was killed on that motorcycle. Jesus. When he went head on to a tree. Yep. Now, I don't know what happened. The girl didn't die. She was in a hospital for many months. That's crazy. She didn't die, but the guy that challenged Annabelle died. I'm so scared to say her name, bro. Like, that is crazy. And she said, when interviewed, the last oh, I saw some. Called, was laughing and joking about the doll with him. Before we Got my dog the behind me, so I we're good. I've that doll many times. I've never challenged it. I've never said, I want to see something happen. I never said, I want to see the doll move. I never said, if you can do something to me, do it. No, that's ridiculous. That's stupid. It's like going to Mike Tyson. Go ahead, hit me. Okay, you think you can hit? Me? You think you're tough? Why would you challenge? So over here is it's the, the movie, movie doll. Is the movie at all? Oh wow! I well, that's the movie doll. Movie dolls. But that's one of the dolls. Oh, that is a movie doll. Warner that's Brothers. sick. Super nice, and allowed us to have one. And do you believe this is just a normal doll, or do you believe because of the intention they put into this for the movie that it also has? Well, that you never know. That's why she's in a case. Yeah, that's what. It's one of the things that you never know. Look. Just right here, the satanic idol of Newtown. This is a mind blower, and I'll tell you why. Something terrible happened to this. 
this idol and it happened to Lorraine. 1991, Ed gets a phone call from a young man about 22 years old who's a bow and arrow hunter hunting deer in the woods, Sandy Hook. If you know Sandy Hook, you know what happened there and the tragedies. But this was way before that happened. He gets lost looking for deer. All of a sudden he stumbles on a grotto of rocks. On top of it is the idol. He never saw anything like this before. As a matter of fact, I didn't either. But he starts to walk away down this pathway. It scared. whispers to him. He says heart's pounding. Because he feels funny looking at that thing. As Can we guess it whispers away, to him? This is the crazy part right here. Out of nowhere in the summertime, in the middle of the woods somewhere, a guy appears right next to him. Oh, I thought it was in a whisper. All in black, from head to toe. About 70, 72 years old. Snow white hair, combed back. Short cropped, snow white beard. Walking step for step with this young man. As the kid's walking, this guy's walking with him without looking at him. I got so scared, I, I wanted to just take an arrow out of my quiver and go like this and stab the guy. I was so frightened of the guy. I said, well, he didn't do that, right? He goes, of course not. He goes, but I did muster up enough energy to say, how do I get out of this place? The man never looked over at him, stared straight ahead, never spoke, pointed off to the right like this, and then walked away. He gets to the road, he finds his car, goes home, tells his buddies. His buddies say, well, why don't you just call it war? He lives right in Monroe, next town over. Ed meets him, they walk into the woods, they find the island. As they're walking in, it, he tells Ed about this, this guy, more detail. Ed sees the idol, he immediately says, I know what that is, and I know who the guy is. A satanic worship idol, it doesn't belong here. It's satanists that are using this. It's good that you told me about it, because I'm gonna take it back with me. It doesn't belong here. So he takes the idol, puts it in the back seat of the car, and comes home. Nothing happens for a day, nothing happens for two days. Third day, Ed's out in the driveway, fixing the wipers on his car. And the rain is about 20 feet or so back, watering some flowers for the hose. She looks at Ed, she goes, hey, after we're done, we'll go have lunch. Ed's like, yeah, no problem. As soon as I fix my wipers, he goes back to doing the wipers. He looks back towards Lorraine, she's no longer there. It's like seconds later. She's like 25 yards up in the backyard, lying down in a fetal position, semi-conscious. No hose, no nothing. Ed drops everything, runs to Lorraine, panicky. Lorraine, what's the matter? She doesn't answer him. She's like semi-conscious. He calls the ambulance and police. They come, they bring her to St. Vincent's Hospital in Bridgeport. She's there for three days, in and out of consciousness. I went with Judy the next morning to see her. She could hardly talk. She just about recognized her, her own daughter. And she was almost like somebody hit her with a baseball bat and she had the flu. Yeah. That's how she was acting, like, just out of it. Doctors did all kinds of tests, brain scans, everything else. The third day, she snaps out of it. She's perfectly fine. She's fine. There's nothing wrong. We can't find anything wrong with her. She says, I want to get out of here. I'm hungry. I want to eat. She comes home. She's fine. The next day, what? I see it. I read, Can we look at the statue again? So I come in and look at the statue. Whatever happened with Lorraine? What, what did the doctor say? He said, they never told me to. He goes, but they didn't need to tell me. I know what happened. He goes, that son of a bitch. And he gave me the guy's name. He goes, his name is, he told him. He goes, he's a German guy. He's a high priest in a satanic cult. What? He did that to Lorraine as a warning to me. Because I know he did. Bro, that because is so crazy. Because he knows I have a lot of knowledge on reverse ceremonial magic. And that I could be damaging too. But he wanted to warn me because I stole his idol out of the woods. He goes, as soon as that kid told me the description of this guy, I knew who it was. Here's the crazy part. He told me his name once. It's a German name. But I'm not going to repeat it. I'm going to tell you why. So I said, oh, okay. Is he powerful, huh? And I'm talking. Yeah, he's real powerful. Two months later, I said, hey, Ed, what's that guy's name again? That satanic priest guy? Ed said, I'm not going to tell you what his name is. you got to remember it or you don't remember. I go, come on, Ed. Here's what he said to me. Every time I mention that goddamn guy's name, something bad happens to me or to us. I go, really? He goes, yeah, that's how powerful the guy is. I don't even like to repeat his name, he says. This is going to freak you out a little bit. I didn't learn this until about a year or so ago. The person who's responsible for the, <coughs> for the death of all those children lived on Yogananda Drive in Newtown, or Sandy Hook. A young man who murdered his best friend and kidnapped his girlfriend about five or six years ago. He lived on Yogananda Drive. This high priest of the satanic cult, well, I'm not going to tell you his name, 
lived on Yogananda Drive before he died. Now, what? what's going on? Three things like this guy was a high priest, had a lot of power, he told me. A lot of power. He lived on the same street as the killer and the other killer. I mean, there's no proof to anything, but yeah. to me, it's kind of too coincidental to be anything other than something the guy was up to. That's what so. Over here is the dinosaur that was used in the Brookfield case and the devil made me do a case. Thank you. Thanks. How is it so far? Great, man. I, <laughs> I can listen to you all night. Woo! Like, I, yeah. I love this. I got to tell you guys the truth, so I want you to have a detailed Yeah, no, post. I, there's one thing I want to ask, because um, I'm not totally sure if they're aware, but Annabelle's being moved tonight, Yeah. correct? Yeah. From the current case to the original. Yeah. This is going to happen tonight. <laughs> You guys You're are moving it from the yeah. current case to the original yeah. case? Yeah. And then it'll be in the original case when we're in here at 3 in the morning. Wh yeah, Wait a minute. It will. The original case. The real, the one it, it had it in originally. Yeah. Annabelle is not to be messed with, you know no. what I mean? Because a lot of crap has happened with that doubt. I mean, in fact, we had some people here one time on a tour say, having a good time tonight? Because we were going to see the museum go to a graveyard, see Ed's grave, yeah. and have Lorraine come with us, and then go to dinner after that, like a whole meal, a whole, whole, whole evening. She looks at me, she says, I only came to see the doll. So I laugh, I go, you don't like care about Lorraine or me? Mm -hmm. I laugh, she goes, no, I came to see the doll, I've been thinking about that doll for two days, recognition. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, you wanna take a picture next to it? So she stood next to the case, I took her camera, I took a photo of her. She walks away, I go, well, I'll have your girlfriend take a picture too, so I hand, to the girlfriend, and I tell the woman, go stand on the other side of the case. So she does, takes a picture. No problem, everything's fine. We leave, we go to the cemetery to see Ed's grave. While we're there, walking away from the, Ed's grave, the lady's tugging on my arm, she goes, can I show you something? She goes, can I ask you a question? I go, yeah, she goes, is this normal? And I go, what? She shows me the pictures that I took and the girlfriend took. Behind Annabelle's eyes were other eyes, looking left and then looking right. What? Like this. And then looking that way at her. At her. Behind her eyes, those button eyes, were another set of eyes, looking that way and looking that way. What? I'm what? I'm not kidding. And so, what does that tell you? And I never had that happen before. And she said, oh, I don't want you to publish them, but I'll let you, I'll, I'll email them to you. So she did. And they're, it's real. Oh my god. Question then. I didn't know that story until now. Since I didn't know that story either. That we'll be able to come here. I've obviously been thinking about how I get to see Annabelle. I mean, I've been thinking about like, oh, I get to see her. Like, not, not just Annabelle, but everything here. And like, oh, I've what, been thinking what you, about it. For yeah, what you're doing, you're energizing her. Recognition. Through the recognition. And the more recognition you give to the doll, the more you even talk about the doll. The more recognition you give, the more energy you're giving it, the more thought process you give to it. Whatever's attached to that doll, looking for a weakness in somebody. If somebody's so bent on seeing something, it's going to oblige, right? So that's why I say you don't challenge it, you don't look at it too much. So this case here was built by Dan Rivera. He's very knowledgeable in a lot of different areas, especially Santa Maria. But this says, accept the existence of the devil. Just like you accept the existence of the God, you have to believe that there is a devil. What am I? God created Shit. The devil too. This was a creature. You got pizza today? I got pizza today too. David oh, Grazzo yeah. had. When yeah. Was a man. The devil got the emo. This is the one artifact we have from the uh, from the house. This is the dinosaur that was seen crawling across the floor, floating True across that. the carpeting, and a voice emanated from near it, saying, "You are all going to die." That was from The Conjuring Three and from the book. The Devil in Connecticut by Gerald Brittle. Good book. It tells a true story. And in fact, Randy Johnson is going to be a guest speaker at our Paracon that we're having uh, October 29th in the Mohegan Sun Casino in Connecticut. The Mohegan Sun on October 29th. So, bro, this is learn, crazy. More about this case, especially too. Uh, I honestly, I would love to go here, but I don't think I'm ever going to be able to. But when I'm able to, I want to go here. Thewarrens.net, W-A-R-R-E-N-S.net. And there's tickets for sale. We're going to have a lot of good guest speakers. One who's a pretty big name that we're going to announce pretty soon. He and his wife are coming. And 
of course, I'll be speaking and Dan will be speaking too, but we have UFO people, we have cryptologists, we have all kinds of, of good people coming. What? And we're going to have over 50 vendors. Do you have one other guest to bring in? Are you not mentioned? You're not mentioned? Are you going to bring in? Oh, yeah, we're going to bring a guest uh, too. <laughs> we have a, a, a replication of the artifact room here. Oh, oh the whole not, thing? Not the whole thing, oh. but a lot of the important artifacts that we went over. The Annabelle doll for sure is coming. The movie Annabelle doll. The uh, really the worship idol. The what? Sandy, uh, Shadow Shall doll. The dinosaur. The conjuring mirror. The white lady that I didn't speak about yet, but I get to. The white lady of Union Cemetery. Jeez. And so it's going to be fantastic. We had a really good turnout in the small. We will also be there. We are speaking on. No, they're going to be there too. Casino is where it should actually be. We sold out in Waterbury, so. We wanted to get a bigger venue, and it's going to be an honor of Ed Lorraine. It's going to be called the Warrens, Seekers of the Supernatural Paracon. Wow. And you guys are invited. <coughs> you don't have to buy a ticket even. Oh, really? You guys are invited. They, they hey. do, right? Hey. Joey and Evan have to. Yeah, they have yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody else has to buy a ticket. <laughs> these guys right here. This is an actual skull used in satanic rituals. What do they do in satanic rituals? Well, they sacrifice animals and humans. You're going to have a lot of people saying, that's not what Satanists do. You're, this guy's full of it. Who's this jerk talking about Satanists? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm the jerk that's going to tell you that. Real Satanists destroy animals and they destroy humans. And why do they do that? They do it to gain power in the devil's eyes. It's like they're giving up something that the devil hates. Because in the devil's eyes, Anything that's created in God's image is a hated image. And you, ladies and gentlemen, are created in God's image. Nothing better than to kill a human being. Or That makes so much sense. Why a baby? This gets a big oh. graphic. Skip 45 seconds ahead if needed. Ooh. YouTube, don't punish me, please. I, I, they, they give us a warning. Oh, well, baby's innocent. The more innocent, they figure the more power they get from the devil. Uh, in fact, the main prize would be a young child. So what they do is they take members of the cult, the satanic cult, may impregnate them for a specific reason of getting the uh, person pregnant, to have the baby, then to kill the baby, and then to eat, drink the blood. And what? The skin, and eat the skin and flesh of the baby. So, are Satanists bad people? Uh. You bet your ass they're bad people. So, that's going to be on display. That's an actual human <coughs> skull that was given to Ed. It collects the Ouija boards for people who can't use them anymore or shouldn't use them anymore. Yeah. And why shouldn't you use that? Why wouldn't you use the Ouija board? It's just a game. Mm -hmm. That's not true. That is a conduit to the other side. That's like a telephone to the other side. What are you doing? You're asking questions of the unknown realm. Put my hand on that planchet and say, I want to speak to the spirit. You're not saying specifically who, right? Mm -hmm. Any spirit can come through. Or I want to speak to my grandma, Josephine. Oh, maybe something's happening. I mean, let me verify that it's her. A demonic entity can read your mind. As far as I'm concerned, from what we've learned, that is true, mind, actually. It's not guesswork. They know what you're thinking. So when you're thinking the red bicycle, they pick it up. Now you're convinced it's your grandmother. Now you invited them in. Oh, Graham, nice to talk to you. So you just invited in the unknown realm. Bro. Like that in? Yeah, I'm never touching a Ouija board ever. Nope. Just destroy a human in some fashion, either physically or emotionally. Have you get broken up in your marriage? Fights, dysfunction, chaos, lose your job, start drinking. Remember I said they attack you on the weakest level that you have. Like a witch could say, I want something bad to happen to Tony, to Elton. And nothing happens right away. It could happen in, in a few months. They pick the time and the date. It's like the devil. When you say, like, if I challenge the interval, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to happen that instant. It could happen a month later, a year. But Ed, every time we were in here, he'd say, don't touch anything. Every time I come in here with him, and I was here, in here with him hundreds of times, he would always reiterate to me. That's why I knew Ed was real and legitimate. Was he never like was like, lose a moment and go, that is all BS, you know, yeah. never. Or say, yeah, don't worry about it, you can grab that, that's okay, never. Yeah. He'd be like, don't touch that, if you touch it, let me know. This is, knowing him for years, he'd say, if you touch 
and don't stare at Annabelle. He would say stuff like that to me, knowing me so well. He wasn't trying to impress me, he was trying to protect me. So, and that's what I try to do when I bring people in here to show them that this stuff is real. And people, like I said before, why do you keep it? Ed told me he kept it for evidence. You're welcome to come to the Paracon if we have an extra seat on the table. Gonna, we're going to give him a table, so. Oh, really? Oh, we're yeah. going to be at the Paracon. <laughs> <laughs> October That's 29th. cool. Where is it going to be? Mohegan Sun. Mohegan Wait, can you, Sun. One, one, uh, one condition, though. I get to be in, in a life-size replica case of Annabelle sitting in it. So I'll be in a bigger know. case. Oh, but, but they can throw a ball. And you can <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah but they throw a ball, and then, I, yeah. and then I drop it. You can idea. build it, right? I like that idea. Okay. Could, I could fill the case and put it in the lobby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just sit in there. And they can uh -huh. take their pictures. Yeah, yeah. But if you're, That's but a great if idea. But if you're, fan, if you're fans of these, these wonderful <laughs> guys, if your fans come and see him at the Paracon, and he can sign October 29th. There you go. Warren's okay. net, right? We got to mark off our calendar. But we do. We didn't know <laughs> we were going to be there until right now. Yeah. Yeah. These guys that's cool. Are, these guys are very respectful. Yeah. And that's what we wanted. That's why we let them in. And certain other people we rejected have asked us before these guys asked us, and we said no. It's because of their attitude. That. These guys, when they asked us, <clears throat> they did it almost like with a reverence to the museum and to Ed Moraine. And that's the reason why Dan and me and Chris and Eric said, yeah, okay, we're gonna have you in. Come on in. We appreciate it. They're very nice guys. They love what they do. Mm -hmm. and they believe in what they do, and that's, that's the key. <laughs> Corley, yeah, I, yeah, I believe so that. So I hope you have 10 million subscribers <laughs> soon. Yeah. What's your question, Corey? Um, can I ask so. some questions outside of this building? Sure. Is that okay? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Sure. Sure. Well, my guys want to show you one thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this oh, yeah. is the haunted oh. passageway. Oh, yeah, I forgot to show you the passageway. The haunted, that's in haunted passageway. Oh yeah, it's, that's paintings are lying in the wall. If you want, you'll see. Follow the end. Those are Follow the end. So, this passageway. When we held our lectures, Ed and Lorraine held their lectures in the house. After the lectures, they would have their guests come through the passageway from the basement into the museum. So this leads right to the house. Oh, wow. So, uh, no way. Follow me. What? This is incredible. No way. And actually, if you investigate in here, oh. you'll capture some good evidence, too. Oh, wow. Oh. You hear that? Yeah. So on the walls here are Ed's paintings. One no! These are all of his paintings? Yeah, this is incredible. Look at this casket. Those are That's all of his casket. paintings. That's a real casket? Uh, there was a man that was into this practice. He would sleep in that casket. Whoa. What? So that was also given to Ed. Wow. That room on the other side of that door is the Halloween room. That's where Ed would hold his lectures, you know, back in the day. He'll yeah. have like 10 people come to the house. He will have him come in the basement, talk about the paranormal. He will show a video of Maurice. If you heard about Maurice, the, the man that was possessed in uh, Massachusetts, he would show that exorcism to them in this little 13-inch TV Jeez. in that room over there. What? So when you're doing inve your investigation, I suggest maybe one person in this passageway. Perfect. Okay. Somebody all the way at the other end. Yeah, you know, okay. If you're gonna try to do any kind of communications, you know, just be careful I see what you ask for because you're gonna re you're gonna get it. Okay. All right. so what if I mean I'm assuming you guys have investigated we this investigated place many times, right? Um we only did it one time. Only one time. Whoa. Only one time. Wow. Just mm. and that was the last time. And we're not gonna do it again. Why? Um because we don't want to give the items that attention. Yeah. And you know, we're around it all the time. Yeah. So we don't want to be affected by that make that makes and sense. And there's more reasons why we go to church, we have a blessing, we go to mass, go to confession. You know, we help people. Yeah. And we have these items and we bring them out to the public where we can educate them. Yeah. That evil does exist. So as been doing it, we're continuing that legacy. Okay. Got it. Right, so uh, how often are people doing investigations here? Is it incredibly rare? Because I mean, as far as I looked, I couldn't actually find one. Uh, like paranormal investigations here, people like how often are those happening here? In this museum? Yeah. You never had anybody investigate this museum. Okay, that's that's what, when I was doing my homework right. on it. I couldn't find any. Right, right. No, you. Other than us, and I told you, yeah, you're gonna have this museum to investigate. You're gonna be the first ones. Investigating this museum, bro. All right, we brought Annabelle down to Las Vegas. All right, they're the very first people it. to ever investigate 
Lorraine Warren's house slash museum. What? Yeah, and 24 Except for these guys. When Zach went to uh, oh. touch her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So we suggest that you don't touch any items. Yes, of course. Uh -oh. We're watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, we're. You know, um, Ed did that when the, the guy touched the doll, was mocking the doll, and said, son, you need to leave. We won't hesitate to tell you that. Yeah, yeah. All right, sure. so just, just respect the items. Of course. But do your thing, you know? Uh, yeah. And see what you're able to catch. Wow. Appreciate it. Thank, wow. thank you for yeah. this. Having us. All right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, man. Thank you. It's All an right. honor. It's it's such I know you guys, some experience. of you didn't know that you were coming here tonight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. No idea. <laughs> so you can scratch that off your bucket list. Yeah. Yeah. That's Actually, crazy. Is, by the way, my main channel, TFIL, the bucket list, it's number 666 on the list. <sighs> Was to come here. Alright, so just remember, you're in the, <laughs> one of the most haunted locations in the world. Yeah. That is uh, crazy. A lot of these items do have attachments. Some demonic, and some could be earthbound spirits, but they all intermingle. Alright, so you'll hear voices, you'll hear something growling, yeah. you just don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. Alright? You know, I don't, I don't know too much about you, but it seems like your eyes are like watering you over talking about it. Oh, I get emotional about yeah. this because, you know, I was mentored by Lorraine. Huh? All right. And um, she prom you know, she made me promise to keep this going yeah. with Tony. So yeah. I take it to heart. Well, of course. So, you know, I'm not doing this for fame or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's because I love this. And I want this to keep going. Yeah. All right. Of course. Yeah. And that story Tony told you about Annabelle with the guy in the motorcycle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was eight years old, driving out Route 25. A guy and his girlfriend come flying by us on a motorcycle. All right. My father says they're going to get into an accident. As soon as we got to the end of the connector, there's the motorcycle on the side of the road. The girl's on the side of the road holding her head. Wait, he witnessed that? Her boyfriend went into the tree line <laughs> and he had died. Yo, now, me and Corey do the I same emotion, bro. Time. That, that was my connection to this location. You were there. I was there and a half. So, you're bro, here. I'm working with the Warrens. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Well, Thank you. This is intense. This is once in a lifetime. It really is once in a lifetime. Man, it's it's really been so many items. So we're like. Like the only people besides that has ever investigated here. Yeah. Yeah, and we're doing basically two. Because we're going to do one and then we're going to come back in at three in the morning. Yeah. So. We're going to watch them put Annabelle from here into here. Yeah. Easy. I did want to add my replica mode. I had no idea that this one was just live. That was the one. Yeah. I, like basically modeled it after. Yeah. That's, That's crazy. crazy. You walk in first and just scan it. Small. Almost the way you had left it. Oh, wow. Look at the tape recorder. Towards the end, was he still paying? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, up until the time he got sick. He was in the class. He was in the cameras, too. Cameras yeah. used that one. You remember the conjuring, too? Yeah. Yeah, so they're kind of recorders he used to use. What? So he's, he's kind of recorded. He, this is his painting here. He did the Witch of Glam's Castle. It's in Scotland. Glam's Castle. It had this box for many, many years that he would bring on a case with him. Oh! And in it, he had. I'm, yeah, that's, I see those in the country. He always had like a little box with him. It had like a little like book in it. It had the uh, a cross. It's a cross, not a crucifix. Crucifix would have Jesus on it. And you call it crucifix. That's just a cross, it's called. He'd have manual of prayers. He had another uh, religious book here. He'd have holy water. And there's another book. And he also he would keep his uh, his crucifix in here that he put around his neck, a big one. Mm -hmm. And he took this on all the, and he'd take incense. He had incense in here too. High spiritual pontifical incense that was blessed by a priest. He'd have everything blessed before he went on a case. This is me and Ed in the range back in the day. Yeah. Look at that. Whoa! <laughs> wow. Look how young I was, huh? Wow. I don't see bad day.
<laughs> no. It's a little like uh, Bradley Cooper there, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. A, lot, a lot like Bradley Cooper. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, my, wow. His father was a prize fighter, you know. Really? Yeah. And he was in the Navy in World War One. Ed was a tough guy, you know. Yeah. I mean, maybe he didn't look into some of the things, but he was brought up on the uh, bad side of Bridgeport, mm -hmm. and he had to fight his way up. He fought. And his father taught him how to box, too. So, so the Amiable Horror slide presentation by Lorraine. Yeah, I think everything in this room is a reason why we even do what we do today. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the key, you know? That's the key is, well, I'll tell you one more quick story if I could. Yeah, could I? of course. It was 19 years old, I think, or going on 19, when his ship collided with an oil tanker. Everybody on the ship had to abandon the ship because the tanker blew up and there's flames all over the place. So they all had to jump ship because of the flames and the, and the ship was sinking. He saw guys going under for the last time. He said it was just terrible. That's awful. But there were 69 survivors in that ship. He was one of them. Now, none of this would be here. There'd be no Conjuring movies. No. No, no Judy, no my wife, no Lorraine the happening. Nothing if he wasn't saved when he was 18 years old. Yeah. You know, when you think about that kind of stuff, it's amazing that everything's for a reason. He was a good guy, man, the best. He did a lot for Judy and me, and so did, of course, Lorraine, but Ed gave me a lot of knowledge. He used to, I used to pick his brain yeah. and ask him questions about, well, how do you know this, Ed? How do you know a devil does it? He would have all the answers. But then he said to me one time, he said, hey, nobody has all the answers. Yeah. Because anybody tells you they have all the answers, they're full of it. Yeah. Because you're not meant to have all the answers. That's the mysteries of the universe. God meant it that way, or else we would know all the answers. You'd know exactly what heaven's like. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, all right, guys. All the cases that he worked on, he'd be listening to it over here. That's right. I, I, absolutely. Thank um, you. This, is, this has been the best well. tour. Yeah, well. Thank you so much, man. This is, this is incredible. I let you guys in because you're good guys, and to do a detailed, you know, tour and detailed walkthrough or investigation, like I said, a lot of people before you have asked, and I said no. And a lot of people are going to ask me after this, and I'm going to say no. Obviously, I'm not trying to do anything wrong here. So when we're asking questions here, you know, but in theory, we're also opening it to anything in here to answer us. Yeah. Right? Here, right. So here's what you do. Yeah. First, like I said, the white light around your bodies, and if you want to be safe, give it to him, and he gives it to you, and he envisions, and he asks for God's protection, right? That's number one. Yeah. Number two is, if you want to investigate City Annabelle doll, you would say out loud, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, allow me to photograph Annabelle without any problems. You, know, you, you, don't, you don't ask questions of these items. You don't say, tell me something, Annabelle, or move for me. You don't do that. Okay. What you do is, in the name of God, respectfully, ask you, God, to protect me from any of these artifacts that I'm photographing and videoing and to ensure that nothing happens to us while we're here or after. You know, with total respect, God, we're trying to learn about the other realm. As long as you're being respectful, not challenging, you're going to be all right. Okay. And protecting yourself. Dan had something to tell us what we did not know was happening. I mean, do not challenge the demonic. Um, I have somebody in here that did challenge the demonic. And he was possessed and he ended up killing somebody. Jesus. Now, I want you guys to meet him and he could tell you what happens when you do that. Um, so come inside into the kitchen. I got Arnie Johnson waiting in the kitchen. No, um, no they're about to, bro, he's about to give great, he's about to detail them of how it feels to be possessed. My God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the one that made the movie. The devil made me do it. Well, have yeah. a, oh, uh, what? Yeah, oh. yeah. I'll, I'll okay. have him come out here and um. We'll, how can we go in there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In there. Cool. Yeah. 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 Wow. Go change whatever you need to change right now. We have nice to. Guy. He's a nice guy. He lost his wife back in April of last year. One year. Now Arnie tried to defend Debbie's younger brother David, the one with the creature. So I didn't know Arnie was coming today. In a Arnie challenged what was bothering David Watson. He said, stop bothering that. He's just a kid. Come to me. Now, Arnie was 18 at the time. Come to me. I'm a man. You know what happened? He doesn't remember what happened. But he stabbed the guy to death. Arnie in the backyard. And that's Kendall. So 
and he went to prison for five years. So, right. Our night has just begun. We meet Ernie Johnson, movie th in the Annabelle the Hall. At our paranormal investigation the museum, we enter during the devil's hour. And in our once in a lifetime ending with the most remarkable paranormal encounter of our lives. Part two July. Bro, we just learned all the real conjuring. Like, we just learned the whole conjuring craziness, what it was really based off of. That is crazy. I thought this was gonna be an investigation. No, I just did a whole learning experience and I just shared it to you guys. Like, we just learned all the conjurings in one little video. Like, that's crazy. If this video drops uh, to almost 100 likes, I will drop a video reacting to the overnight at the Honda Museum of the Lorraine Warrens Haunted Museum. If you guys enjoyed this, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button if you are new, and I'll catch you guys on my next reaction video. Peace.